Hello guys, welcome back to the Board Draw Podcast. And it's episode three. We're talking we're talking Nations League first, I reckon. Nations League, I mean It's been a sticky one. Uh, the weather's been fucking lit. The weather's been nice. I'm sweating but, tits off. But the Nation League has been anything other than lit. It's been pretty bad. I mean, it's been a painful watching experience. I mean, the first game against Hungary, the You think the that's penalty, just a blip? You're like, oh yeah. Yeah, you don't think it's anything, do you? Yeah, I like, think oh, I, like, yeah. English performance wasn't great. Don't look into it too much. These they weren't going to happen. They weren't by any means worse than what we've seen before. We've seen England play like that before and managed to nick a result and this time they didn't. They lost 1-0. All right. Maybe that's a, sh- a good thing because they were turning it around. They think oh, we actually need to kick it up a gear. Yeah. We can't coast even past these teams. Then you had the, was it the Italy game or the Germany game next? It was a Germany, Germany game. Germany game, yeah. And he played a different lineup. Yeah, got played off the park. Yeah. And oh, then we got cool. lucky yeah. by Harry Kane getting absolutely nice by VAR. It wasn't a penalty because no. he was offside, wasn't he? I think while you've brought him up, I'm going to just jump to Harry Kane. Is he a victim of a negative style of football that doesn't suit him? Or is he just a bit shit for England? I know he's got like the most goals ever, blah, blah, blah. But genuinely, every match I watch England, he stinks up the gaff a little bit. I think he is one of the first names on the team team sheet. Yeah, he always is. I think I think if you take Yay. if you took a manager who plays a pro- progressive style of football and not so like yeah. not someone who's tactically so inept we, like Southgate. So we're talking about him being a victim. Who, who, who could actually use Harry Kane as that sort of we you know he likes to play that centre forward that drops really deep to gather yeah. the ball. But it doesn't really work in this four three three because Southgate, 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 Southgate. He plays with. You'll play Declan Rice. Yeah. And you'll play Calvin Phillips, Henderson, Bellingham. So you've got quite two defensive sort of yeah. midfielders there. And then he'll play sort of like Mount or like. I don't know. Maybe he plays Bellingham in that like third position in midfield. But it's not it's not an attacking midfield. It's someone like James Madison. No. Do you know what I mean? For me, the issue is. So there's no one to run on behind Harry yeah. Kane when he drops deep. You either want two players either side of Harry Kane that are pushing onwards, which is what you think you'd get with Jared Bowen, with Sterling, with Saka. But the issue is that I think Harry Kane, I think he he's trying too much to get involved. And for England, obviously, he's the main guy. So he feels a need to get involved. Whereas like for... Tottenham, he is the main guy, but there's other people that can do you've got stuff. Son, you've got Kulusevski, yeah, you've got, play, you've got players who get involved. But and I mean, if you if you look at the way England play, yeah, especially when you play with the with the three at the back and you've got the two wide defenders, and then you also have two wide attackers. We are playing a very very wide formation. All of our attacks are coming down the left or the yeah. right, nothing through the middle. So when you've got that centre forward who's dropping deep, you haven't got anyone to aim for in the box. Yeah, and you look at our players we have up front. You've got Saka. Right, you got Sterling, you've got Bowen, you've got you've got like Jack Grealish, Jack Grealish, yeah, and like Mount plays up wide sometimes, Foden plays up wide sometimes. None of these players are going to get their head in head on the ball, and that's all we do is just whip the crosses in. And I mean, Harry Kane nearly scored from a header last night. It would have been a great goal. Do you see his disgusting on. dive where he got like? It wasn't a dive. It definitely was a dive. I, do you, you literally see the footage where the guy steps on his foot nah, and he it's did, a then dive. it takes a second. Falls he goes down, down like a sack of shit. You, bro, you can see the fucking nah, step on the it, foot. It's a dive. The guy Harry Kidd is coming across the man. He takes a terrible touch, yeah, and then dives. So he takes a terrible touch, but the guy does step on his on his. On nah, his nah, I think nah, it's his left dive. foot. He, you see it? He's, he's Are you saying he's the guy didn't step on his foot? Is nah, that what you're saying? It's, it's a dive. It's a yeah, dive. but did the guy step on his foot? Nah, it's a dive. The guy didn't step on his foot. Nah, he dived. But the guy did the guy step on his foot? Nah. The guy didn't step on his nah. foot. Okay. He dived. Harry Kane. This is more drawn, not sponsored by Specsavers. Apparently, come on. Come on. I mean, but, um, it, it was it was. I'll put it down to Harry Kane. For me, the issue is this free at the back, this constant need to play free at the back. I get it. If you're in a hard game where you're like, we're going to be second best and there's areas that the opponents are going to exploit and we need free at the back, fair enough. Like we need Carl Walker to cover Trent or something. I mean, I think the perfect that's example was enough. when we played Germany in the Euros. Yeah, because... that's fair enough. But for me, any game that isn't maybe 
a Germany, an Italy, or a Brazil. Portugal, yeah. Like- Even Portugal, I reckon we'd play four at the back. We'd give them a game. I think with the attacking talent that we've got on, on in the squad, you can't think defensively. You've got to think attacking. And then if you lose 4-3, I think more people will be on your side than losing 1-0. Losing 4-3 is down, usually done to an exceptional performance from one player. And that could be an England player or like like say an Italy or Portugal, Spain player, Brazilian player. Um, I agree with you. I think this negative football, the, the, the fear of losing, this conservative yeah. play style, it's not, it's not po- uh, like a positive. It doesn't push this team to be the best players that it can be you look at how Foden plays when he's in that Man City side you look at how Kane plays when that, that Tottenham side get going under Conte completely like they're actually the world beaters yeah but nothing like that when they play under Scarif Southgate with this it is negative football which is detrimental to the potential of these players so let me ask you then are you Southgate out now I think he's warranted he's done more than enough to deserve a shot at this World Cup. Yeah, for However, me, there's not enough time between if you, now and the World Cup to I get think, someone else in. So if the first, the was it the 2018 World Cup? Yeah. Where we got to the semis and we lost three out of seven games to get there? Yeah. Mad, crazy. And well, I think we, what we, I'm saying about the Champions we, League. We beat, we beat, we beat Panama. Like Real Madrid. You can lose we, your we way We beat to like the Tunisia. Yeah, to like beat, 1-0 Harry Kane last minute. And who did we beat in uh, Columbia? And we beat someone else as well, didn't Sweden. we? Sweden. Sweden. Yeah. That was it. I mean, games you should be winning. Yeah. First game you come up against a decent team. It wasn't even a decent team. The Croatians were good, but they were no, by, by no means even a top like three team in that, in that tournament. Yeah. And we got, I mean, we, we started well, good free kick from Trippier, but, yeah. you know, we well, fell like apart. What happened in the final of the Euros, start well. And then when the onus is and on instead you, of, to and take instead the game of taking it, it to off, him, yeah, that's it. You sit back and then you lose it. Invite that pressure. Yeah. And, I mean, like like you say, what what it's negative, detrimental football is. Yeah, there's no there's no desire to go on and absolutely so you're smash it. Giving team. Gareth the World Cup. I'm giving him this World Cup, and say I think he gets another semi final and then loses. What are you saying then? Get him out. That's not improve. That's not improvement, yeah, is no, it? I, I mean, we've literally got. We every year we should be looking to improve. We have got a semi final. Fair enough. Kind good. of like he's uh, going to fall on his own sword due to his own success. They're like, if he doesn't win the World Cup now, does that warrant him going and packing his bags? I don't think so. I mean, he, he, if he gets to the final and we lose like a, a tight game against yeah. a really good team. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. But it's how we get to the final, I think, that matters more. Yeah, no, I agree. Because we, if we can't, if we, we've got a group with the USA, we've got Iran, and we've got... USA, Iran, and... Who's the last one? What? Well, we should know this. We should know this. I mean, I just saw it. Didn't they just qualify? Was it Wales? No, Wales. Yeah, Wales, that's yeah, Wales. it. Wales, yeah. Wales just qualified. Um, we should be getting nine points out of that group. Mm. Nine points, easy. We should. Um... I mean, after those Nations League games, you look at that and go, I mean... Well, that's another thing I want to bring up. It's like, so obviously the Nations League now is just more games for players that are already playing 60-ish games a season. Obviously, they're tired. And I know that's not an excuse. Everybody's players are tired, blah, blah, blah. But say the Nations League didn't exist and they went out of their Premier League season straight into a rest, straight into the start of the next Prem season and then to the Qatar World Cup... The England players would be on like a high. Yeah. So I think the fatigue argument. Do is, we is look very too valid. much into this Nations League? Uh, no, I, I mean, regardless, England's C team. England should be able to call up a squad of players I that, have, that for, yeah. for their first cap, and we shouldn't get beaten four 0 by Hungary. Yeah, we have such an incredible talent pool yeah, in this country. The talent pool is mad, and and it, it might come across as English arrogance, but it's not. We do. We have a yeah. fantastic structure of football in this country. Yeah. We have such a competitive um, pool of players who are, who are fighting for that first England cap still. Yeah. I mean... I agree. Like, Gareth Southgate, his argument was, I'm trying things. Sometimes things don't work. But, like, I think you can try things. They not work, but people can see something happening. Yeah. I mean... Whereas, like... Th- there was there was no personality. There was no the style of play Hungary yesterday. What happened shambolic. yesterday? I mean, there was no clear... Yeah identity for what that England team was trying to play like yesterday it was genuinely get it to the centre-backs 
play it to the midfielders, and the midfielders look for a pass out wide. Yeah. And when Nick, the inevitably the hungry team just they set back, and then it would be a ter- like the passing last night was terrible, and they would pick up a loose ball and bash. It was a perfect count yeah. attacking performance from them. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, hungry buzzing. I mean, I saw um, on the BBC it said uh, England humbled by Hungary, uh, controversial Stones red card, and I thought. Stones red card's got nothing to do with it. Was this. Like but it was three nil. It was yeah, three yeah. nil when by Stones red card. It wasn't a red card. It was it a was red card. Decision. The decision is mental. But like, but how is that not VAR? Because yeah. that's a game changing. I mean, oh, game changing. It's not a game changing because we're three nil. But that is an impactful moment. Yeah, right? you still VAR. It's weird that it's and but it was a second yellow, and people were saying because it was a se- it was a yellow card, it doesn't go to VAR. But if it's a second yellow, leans a red card. Why is that not VAR? Yeah, no, because I the guy literally just runs, runs into, into him. Runs into Stones who's not looking. Yeah, it's weird. And the, it it was straight away. And I don't think there's anyone on the planet who thought that's a red card. Yeah. He's 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 that's so intentional. He knew where he was coming. No idea. It, it, it was mad madness. But that performance from Hungary, fair play to him. They absolutely turned up on the night and deserved nothing like less than that for them when it could have been easy a bit more. Yeah, top of the group. That's good for them. Um, second Germany. And then Italy, then England, bottom of the group. So I mean, England still got to play uh, Italy and Germany. Yeah, in September, but I mean, yeah. maybe. I mean, the thing is, it if you if you go to, if you go to Germany and beat them four 0 and you go to Italy and beat them four 0 yeah. you're going to turn around and say, "Oh well, Gareth's got us going again." Or you're going to say, "Oh well, their Nations League games don't mean anything." So, so like, it is very hard to read into it. But I mean, but you've got to read into it. It's the worst home defeat England have suffered since 1928. That it, is mental. That's as as Ashley Cole said, Hungary came oh. and they were hungry. As soon as I heard that, I was like, get Ashley off the TV now, mate. You're ridiculous. What a clown. You Anywho. get paid to do that. I mean, I think we should talk a little bit about what the problem with England is. Yeah. What are they missing? And for me, I 100% think we should stick with the four at the back. Yeah. Because we can alternate to a five at the back for the games that need it yeah because we know how to do that yeah and I mean if you look at our success in um, the 2018 World Cup it came literally from our marauding centre backs yeah we had Harry Maguire and John Stones literally charging down the pitch like it was phenomenal we don't do that anymore Harry Kane Harry Kane came on last night and Calvin Phillips lost the ball a ball was passed by him and Harry Kane turned and I swear to God it took him 325 minutes. Uh, Harry Maguire, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, not Harry Kane, yeah, Harry Maguire. Yeah, yeah. It took him 300 minutes to turn around and the ball was passed yeah. him and it was a great finish. But So for me, what's the problem is he's trying to shoehorn in players so that are good for the country but are either shit form or just don't deserve to be in the team. A, like, AKA, okay, Harry Maguire. Harry Maguire, like, why is he in the team? Just like there's players. The only, that, the only player that I would argue who should be in the team based on his England merit alone is Har- um, Pickford. Yeah, I agree with that. Jordan Pickford, Jordan Pickford has never up. ever let England yeah, down. Yeah, no, I agree. And he's been the reason we, we've had success in these last two tournaments. My issue with the England team is that any team, I think these days, needs a midfield that can take control of the game, especially international football. The midfield is key. You dictate the if you're a big nation, you dictate the game. That's what Croatia did with Luka Modric. That's what Germany did back in the day with Tony France Cruz. Are doing at the minute. That's what France does with Paul Pogba and Kante. A big nation Kamavinga, should Shemeni. have players that dictate the game. We got no one. You look at that England midfield, yeah. And no one I in saw, the midfield saw, that can dictate a game. I saw uh, like a starting eleven with the estimated value of England players, and it had it had Rice hundred million, Bellingham hundred million. Calvin Phillips, sixty million. Yeah, and, you, and you're thinking, play like it. Yeah, I mean, hundred million. It's, it's, I think Declan Rice is my first name on the team sheet every time, but he's not the centre mid that's not gonna dictate your game. He's the one that is gonna allow his partner to dictate yeah. the game. Whoever's playing, you've got to get him, him the right partner. He, he is the I pivot like, in that midfield. Yeah, he, I like Bellingham a lot. I think he's too young to start dictating games. I we think he had, got, a, he had a, had a hard game. He's had a we hard need couple someone. Games. I, there's obviously no one really in this mould of like a a Tony Cruz, a Luka Modric, a Thiago. What about James Madison playing a little bit? We deeper need than he someone for Leicester that can be mature on the ball, pick the right passes. If the game's 
looking like he's getting away from the team. I mean, slow the game down. We go down. back to that Modric performance in, in the Champions League final. My man literally earned himself a new contract based well, on that. that's what I'm saying, yeah. And he dictated that game. He, yeah. he, he His ability to play off Carvajal His Ryan football IQ is different. He saw the game was getting away from Real Madrid, so he slowed the pace down. And then when Liverpool were looking a bit wobbly, he sped the pace up, played the ball in, they got the goal. We need someone that can judge games and be like, we're struggling, let me slow the ball down, we'll take some silly fouls, we'll do this, we'll do that. Right. Maybe let's talk Let's talk about some players who we think could be brought in that maybe haven't been thought of yet. I'm So I think England need to switch from that 4-3-3 into either a 4-3-3 but with the third midfielder playing literally as almost an attacking midfielder yeah. or just switch to a 4-2-3-1 because you can't lose Harry yeah, Kane four, two, three, you can't, you can't lose play. Harry Kane because no. Harry Kane is the only person who does score for us apart from yeah. Sterling and he's vital and, and you'll be crazy no, no, you'll probably walk into most of the teams yes yeah. so in for me the stickers team. are Harry Kane always wingers are fine you, you have like a pool of wingers that you can play between Sterling yeah. Saka Grealish Sancho if he's on Mount form, Bowen. Foden Bowen. Then for me, you need a cam. It's got to be Foden, and Foden's got to play cam. Foden, Foden I like can the idea play. Of Madison, Foden can play as that obviously. false nine role because he's done it for City. Yeah, and it's perfect partnering with Kane. He plays that attacking midfielder. His energy role, is so good as well. He will run on behind yeah, Kane, yeah, yeah. and Kane wins flick ons. He does. Yeah. So for me, we need just more maturity in the midfield, and I think that's why sometimes we struggle with like like the Italy game. I, I know the argument is, oh, this is a young squad. They'll get better at that. The Italy experience will like teach them a bit more. But if we want to do something at this World Cup, he needs to he needs to find an identity in that midfield that's more than that midfield is there to win the ball back. Cause because at the you, Euros, play was, you play Calvin Phillips, Declan Rice. And Declan They're just running the around, ball. getting the ball yeah. back and doing nothing with but it. That, but yesterday, Calvin Phillips was getting barged off the yeah. ball Losing possession, he had a terrible, terrible game. You see the size of that Don that came on towards the end, that Adam, like, yeah. can he just absolutely bodied but Calvin like, Phillips? Yeah, it's it, so funny. It, it, Calvin Phillips is a good player, yeah, right? Yeah, and I he like was him. England's player of the year. Yeah, yeah. And he clearly does something, and we've seen it. When he dictated the ball against the Croatia in um, the start of the Euros, yeah. that was a phenomenal game from Calvin Phillips. And before that game, I was saying he should be nowhere near the England team. So for me, that game is him having the game of his life. Yeah. He, that's not his constant. But you need someone like you say, that's dropping like. Eight out of ten. You game. need in the middle of that midfield a metronome, someone yeah. who can dictate the tempo of the someone game. Someone that will drop and an eight England, out of ten every time he plays. England do not have a no, player like, like that. Luka Modric. Every time he plays, eight out of ten in a big game. The only player who I think could be game changer for England, if brought in, that I'd probably look at would be. I mean, you've got to be looking at Madison. Yeah. I think Madison had a very good end to last season. Yeah. And I think he gives something that a lot of England players done. He has a really good passing range as well. Yeah. Eberechi Eze, I think he plays, he play, does play quite deep for Palace or he does play out wide. Yeah, I like But Eze. he, I've, I've seen him play live a, a lot and my man has an innate ability to just have time on the ball. Every time he yeah. gets the ball, he looks like he has, he's got yards and he's got hours of space. But he's also progressive and he does sort of that similar thing to Bellingham is he'll get that ball and then he'll play it and then he'll arrive on the edge of the area. Yeah. And, I mean, maybe that's a different option we can have, but we're still lacking that a player yeah, who, who that, need, team, that Thiago, that Modric, yeah. that player that can dictate the tempo. It's like of the, game. the one kind of like Bellingham will be that player in a few years, but he's not going to be at this World Cup. He, but and that, uh, that's why when you have Rice and Phillips, you sort of playing with two players who do the same thing, the same thing but differently. Yeah, Rice is the better version. Rice gets the ball, he plays progressive passes, or he carries it. Yeah, Calvin Phillips is probably a better ball winner. But yeah, I agree. So that is what I think for me is the issue with the England team. It's the identity in midfield, the maturity level in midfield, just someone we need and it will come in years. But right now we haven't got someone that can partner Declan Rice and do the other half of the game correctly. At the moment, we just got two ball winning midfielders. I mean, once we do find that player though, with the ability, if they play with Declan Rice, they're going to have so much time and space and and freedom to play how yeah. they want to play, but it's the it, like you say, Someone, it's a matter of time. We I'm need thinking, that player, just like in the mould of Santi Cazorla, oh, ideal. Just will do the work, but like you said about Eze, just always has time on the ball. Is so calm, both footed. 
Oh, and then you have the passing player. range as well. Dream I player. mean, that that is ideally like what that. we need. But and I think Bellingham will get there. He's he, he looks like the kind of player. Bellingham is is a Rolls Royce of a midfielder. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. But he is young. Yeah, and that's the problem. He's not gonna take the game by the scruff. But I mean, you look at you look at other teams. They've got young players as well yeah, who, yeah, yeah. who who are doing it. Yeah. You know, you look at like Pedri. Yeah. Gabi. You know, yeah. Tushemeni, Kamavinga, like you've got yeah, maybe, young, young yeah, players. Yeah, and like, so you age, if you're good enough, you're old enough. Yeah, I back and, it. I back it. And to be fair to him, Southgate has done the right thing. But I mean, maybe we should talk for a couple of minutes just about. So I said give Southgate the World Cup. Yeah, Do you I agree? agree. I think he's earned himself enough credit in the bank to, I think to, to, to give him making a change now there's, there's not enough time like. making a change now is uh, you've got five months yeah but five the players, months the players, players love, on a holiday. the players love Southgate as well they'll they'll need some like he's persuaded. done amazing things they'll he's done some phenomenal things he's, he's turned getting rid England, of every, good idea. every Englishman used to fucking hate their yeah, national team exactly, and now yeah, exactly. now we're now we're talking about the World Cup five months in advance because we, we're excited we've, yeah. got, we've got so much potential well, now everybody is absolutely calling for his head but he is my question is yeah would Southgate have more credit in the bank if, or like less hate from the public if his style wasn't so defensive? Um, because he, I surely, think, I think if you look at teams, people if you look at people like back, Sam Allardyce, yeah, very defensive Sorry, manager, James, like warm up, the and gravy. he gets sacked left, right, and center, yeah. but he gets results. Warm up the gravy, Allardyce he gets results, back. and I think, but with with the standard of player that we have. We've got to. We've got think, like we can't be just scraping results yeah. to get by. Like I think everyone's we need to put a like stamp on the game. Golden and there, generation there is, flashbacks, aren't they? They're like we're no, going to let another golden generation go to waste. We're going to let another golden generation go to waste. And it's not that. It's not like that. But these this, these players have nowhere near the amount of credibility that no, the golden generation had. The Rooney Those were Beckham players. Era, the Rooney Beckham, Gerard yeah. Lampard. Like They're, this will be there maybe in like another or two tournaments. Yeah, They're but, still all too young to be that kind of caliber, but. Yeah, give Southgate the World Cup. He's got to have the World Cup, but it's, I think so depending on the World Cup, even if we get to the final Qatar, and anyway. we lose and we lose two games on the way there, not good enough. No, we need to be playing. We need to get nine points out of our group, and then we need a fairly difficult round of sixteen. Yeah, and then that Germany I want, game I want, in the I want to see that us like a lot of morale. I want to see in being Germany. Yeah, that, well, that like was that, that was it because that was the test. Yeah, that united but the country. We've like literally got to go in because we drew against Scotland. Yeah, we did we draw against Croatia as well, or did we beat Croatia? Can't remember. That might be a draw, you know. And then yeah, so it, it was. Yeah, it was. It was. It wasn't even a clean right road there. Yeah, no, it wasn't there. It was a draw, and then everyone was like, "Oh." But like, that's yeah. the thing. It, when when you have such a conservative style of football with mm. no real identity to your play, you, you don't play your pressing game, or you don't play like a tiki taka game, or even long ball. Yeah, you just you're just there, and you're sort of adapting to what your opponents do. But without that, you're never going to have clear attacking options, and players aren't going to be making runs that they make every game. Yeah. And so there is no cohesion and you can see it on the pitch when it happens because teams like Hungary, they, they sat back, they allowed us to pass the ball, but then we got to the edge of the area and there was no there was no one making those runs, yeah. those darting runs, or there was no one pulling the opponents away so that he can make space for other players to run into. Yeah. And then we It struggled. feels like they've all got kind of like a, but Gareth Southgate giving them like a one style of attack. There's one gear to England yeah. and it's literally get the ball and hope that Sterling runs behind. Yeah, run it down the wing That's and drill a cross in. And, and we looked dangerous when Sterling came on. Yeah, I like Sterling. We, we looked, we looked um, dangerous against uh, Germany when uh, Grealish came on. Yeah. But they're the only two wingers that I would argue run direct. They're direct wingers. They, they attack yeah. their defences. Saka is brilliant. And I think no one's better at getting the ball into the box than him. And I think Bowen... Bowen's obviously class, but I think it was a bit much for him at the minute. Yeah. And he's obviously had a very he's old season. He's got to go to the World Cup. But I mean, if you do get rid of Southgate, who are you looking at? It's Graham Potter, isn't it? It's got to be Graham Potter. I think that's the name on the list. If I you think, want an Englishman that's like a bit more projecty, Graham Potter. If I you want something like immediate like, results, you're talking maybe like Arsene Wenger. Arsene Wenger, Pochettino. Pochettino, he's on the mark. You see PSG let him go, I think tonight, yeah. confirmed. It's, it's Ocampos who's taken over now. I don't know. Isn't he meant to be like sporting director or sporting something? Sporting director. I mean, I can't remember what's the name. I think they're linked with Zidane. But then, um, I mean, just before we end the Nations League stuff, I've got a question for you about the World Cup. Who's your favourites? 
My favourites for the World Cup at the minute. We'll do a proper preview nearer the time, but like right now, who well, are your favourites? If I had, to, if so, if I've got fifty quid, yeah. But Come on, talk to me about if you put fifty pound of your. This is how it's my own money. Now. My own your money. own money, and then like a fifty pound I give you for a little bit of a banner one. My own money. I'm going France. Okay. I think. Even I think. though they haven't won a game in their nations league, I, I just, I, I, I like you say in the nations league. How how much can we take from it? Yeah, I agree. I think I just look at their squad. Mbappe, Benzema off one of the best years of his career. Yeah, probably get a bounce. I door. mean, you've got you've got players like Camavinga, Tuchemeni, Kante, done, you've got Pogba, oh, you've got like just ridiculous quality depth, everywhere. Like, yeah, quality everywhere. Griezmann. Yeah. Coman. You know, you've got just unbelievable yeah. players and some of these don't even start, like Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it's hard to look past them. I think if you wanted to look at a couple of outsiders, for me, I think Argentina could come really good. I'd love that for Messi. I think Brazil have a f- like really underrated squad at the minute. Yeah. I think Brazil as well. Argentina and Brazil and my European underdog probably... Oh, I don't know if Spain have enough identity about him. Maybe Portugal. Interesting. Portugal always there and thereabouts. Okay. My favourite's are Germany. Yeah. Don't know why. I just think they've got a bit about them. They looked good against us. They smashed Italy. Yeah, they smashed Italy. Uh, I think... I just like their depth as well. I like them going forward. I like Hansi Flick. I like his attacking style Hansi of play. A that, that's some, that's something that like, he's just come in and imparted his style of play immediately. Just high press, attacking. And that's something that, like you can tell that's not his identity immediately. Whereas like, what is Southgate's identity really? Uh, he doesn't have one. He's, his identity that is the FA spokesperson for yeah. everything that's right. Oh. And to be fair to him, we love Southgate. We love him. Yeah, but, he's, boy. he's but good. Like, he's a good man. Sometimes you got, even though you love him, they're just not good enough. The question is, Southgate, are like, you the one? Like you would not put your, your nan up front. Like you love her, but she's not going to score fifteen goals a season. You know what I mean? All right, I think we're going to take a little break here. Yeah, and then we'll come, and then we'll back, come to back, you back with some Premier League, yeah, some Premier League talk. Yeah. All right, lovely stuff. Right, so we're back to it. Just a little caveat: if you're here for the mystery giveaway that's on our Twitter, if you don't follow our Twitter, it's bore dot draw mm-hmm. give it a follow we did a mystery kit giveaway if you're here to find out who won we will be announcing that at the end of the pod so Wait, stay well, tuned yeah we don't even know who won yeah we're going to split it off yeah. and do this show yeah um yeah so we'll be announcing that uh we're going to be doing way more giveaways in the future anyway yeah. so so stay tuned follow us on socials yeah, follow us on all our socials um well, hopefully trying to start our TikTok up yeah. soon as well. So we're also on Apple there. Music and Spotify now. We're global, so, baby. We're stream everywhere. Us, we're here. Watch us on Spotify. We're there. Uh, we're YouTube. every fucking where. Boardroom. Come on. Sponsored by... We're not sponsored by, but we've got a couple of beers on the go from the Garden Brewery. Little they're fruity not, They're not that bad, you know. Little fruity thing. I've got a pineapple bad. one. Luke's got a lychee. And mango. Lychee and mango. Anywhere I go, I make the mango. <laughs> right, right, anywho. Back to football Back talk. to the Prem. Back to football talk. We're going to uh, swing to the Premier League, the the land of dreams. So the big big news: top goal scorers pre transfer window for next season. We're talking Harry Kane. We're talking Ronaldo. We're talking Mo Salah. But there's two new boys on the block, and not just any new boys. Some big new boys. Two big new boys. We've on got the block. big Erling Haaland, and we're talking Darwin Nunez. Come on! I come saw a tweet. I saw, saw I saw a tweet where it was like. Um, it was Gary Lineker introducing match of the day. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like um, back to like dunk. It was like it was like after to... losing Mane to Bayern Munich, du- uh, Nunez fit into the Liverpool's front three just due to natural selection. <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> I'm talking it, Darwin. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was talking Darwin. Yeah. Back to Michael Brotherton. That's it. Yeah, Anfield. your commentator Ma- yeah. is Michael Brotherton. Love Come it. On. Uh, good, but yeah, good let's start with Haaland. Is he the guy? I think he is. I mean, you were looking at. Everyone says also it. for fifty one million release clause joke. Obviously his wages are going to be fucked. I mean I don't care, but I mean he is. He's going to be alo- the guy, a, isn't he? Alongside Mbappe, he is the top talent. He's going to be world, the guy. He? He's going to be. I mean the guy. It, you wouldn't be surprised if he scored forty five goals next season with Kevin De Bruyne, uh, Phil Foden, Bernardo like Silva, them boys, and it's like just fucking hoof it in the box. Haaland will be there. It's literally just, that though. I mean, Kevin's he, assist will be a joke. He is going to absolutely. Uh, he will be. I think he's got to be head on favorite for top scorer. Yeah, he, if he stays fit, there is no for me pre season. No, I'm going to put a twenty on him top yeah, top scorer. I, I think 
It's a joke. I, I keep seeing tweets where it's like 38 year old and Ronaldo will outscore <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and Haaland. And I think, but uh, will he? I don't think he will. No. I mean, I, I, think, I think he'll still have a good season. I think you put me in that City team, I'm getting 15 goals. I mean, so if you put in like a world class striker, he's got to get 30. I mean, you look at how many tap ins a striker or the, the player in, in, in the middle for the yeah. front three is scoring. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous because. Their ability to play outside the box is unreal. Only matched and he by just Liverpool. He's a scary cunt, isn't he, Harlan? He will have centre back. You've seen that video of him lining up. He puts three balls on top of each other, and then he he hits the top one off, and then hits the sign, and then he, oh yeah, the yeah, top yeah, left yeah, corner, yeah, and then he hits the other one off, and he like smashes the sign, yeah, and then he hits the, and there's like a tiny bit of left angle. He he, bash, he will just body any centre back that isn't on crud. He will just have. For breakfast, bro, and dinner, oh, it's gonna be mad. Everything, yeah. Like the guy, he's just an absolute yeah. freak of nature, and I think. He might not be the best striker in the world at the minute, no, but he will be. Yeah, for me, no he is sit, like pretty much the only signing City need to still challenge. I mean, you're looking at the last summer they were looking at Harry Kane. All they've done is just got a younger, maybe better. I don't think he's better. Probably not right now. Not right I now, but he he could definitely be, yeah, yeah, be way better numbers. than Harry Kane. He'll do numbers. I mean, if, if Haaland actually scored 40 goals next season, would anyone be that surprised? No. I mean... I, I just generally think he is. Yeah, the he is, is, he is, is he the, he's just fit. a machine. Yeah, but if he stays fit, then yeah, I think he's a, a nine out of 30, ten. 10 out I think signing. I think thirty goals is got to be the target. Yeah. If he plays every game, thirty goals has to be the target. Yeah, and now going the across way. to Mercedes the other side. side of the north. Yeah, I mean Liverpool got sign Darwin eighty-five Nunes. million pound Darwin Nunes. I've seen a lot of fans. Um, tweeting that thing what Klopp said about Pogba transfer you know 100 million yeah and uh, so for me Liverpool have this kind of like oh we don't spend money but we're still challenging they spend money they spend it they do spend money but they do recuperate a lot they do Liverpool have this way of selling players that are a bit shit but still get loads of money yeah, I mean, they've got to do what they've got to do, yeah. and no. fair enough. Like, so for I me, mean, if you look, at, I think there is a there is a point to be had about the uh, point per net spend. Yeah, and Klopp's is very good. Yeah. I mean, and round applause to him because he's done very well, and he, they made good signings. Every player they brought in has been good. Yeah, it's not like see where you bring in players, test them out. They could be shit. So he brought in Mangala for centre back, who was I shit. I mean, Ferran Torres, yeah, came shit. in, Fen- and he was meant to be Ferran like Torres. this like phenomenal player. Yeah, and he was brilliant I thought he was a great player yeah, yeah, but then him. he wasn't good enough and he went to yeah. Barcelona for like Leroy 15 Sane, million yeah. Sane tearing up in the Bundesliga so good I loved, I loved Sane every time City played Arsenal and they had Sane on the starting 11 I used to just shit myself I thought he, he was a phenomenal player so good he I used to be my favourite he would like, walk into any Arsenal Premier League team at the minute yeah, I think he was so good yeah. just a machine so, but yeah anyway, Darwin Nunes you know? um, great bit of signing yeah 85 million though I think the problem is you look at Benfica, yeah, yeah. They have this ability, like Liverpool, to sell players for yeah, just absolute yeah. money. You look at João Felix as yeah, well, yeah, like unbelievable amount of money. Yeah, and I'm, he's obviously got to be good. I, I listened to yeah. um, one he played of my, well when they played against Liverpool. Benfica. Yeah, I mean, I was into one of my favorite players of all time, Adel Tarap. He was Can't. talking on Talksport about this oh, you kid. Played alongside him, yeah. And he said he has no doubt in his in his mind that the only thing that could hold him back would be the language barrier. Yeah. Because if you look at Nunez, I mean, a front three of Salah, Nunez and Diaz. Diaz. Surely he's I mean, similar language. The amount of movement be, between yeah. that front three yeah, is good. insane. Jota as well. I mean, the thing is, you look at the two, right. Would you rather have another season with Mane and, you know, compete or have another season with Nunez where either you build for the future or you compete but is he, he's got to reach that money level now he's got that's yeah. a lot of goals and assists yeah yeah and a lot of partnership as well with Salah yeah. and Jota and Diaz to build up in a very short period of time because yeah. City will hit the floor running Haaland's going to go into that team yeah ready to go and yeah. he will he will score goals that's what he does yeah and is Nunez ready is Nunez ready to be fair to him I haven't actually seen a lot of Nunez I've seen far more of Haaland well, he got linked to Arsenal when Arsenal were looking for a striker and so I've watched a bit of him and he, he looks like the kind of profile that I want as an Arsenal striker, a big, strong lad that can go down the left wing as well. So I like him in that sense and he'll do the rotation. So Liverpool have that kind of diamond rotation with Trent, Salah, Jordan Henderson on the right hand side. Yeah. And then they get their striker, their left winger and their left back to do a similar kind of thing. And I think Nunez will do that with Louis Diaz and Trent, uh, with Robbo. Yeah. So I think in that mould, he's good and he's good aerially. But for me, 
his hold up play leaves a bit to desired. I mean, to be fair, I, I I can't say I've seen too much of him. Obviously, he's a young boy. Hold up play will come when he kind of like matures. But, I mean, Liverpool don't Liverpool don't hoof it like that. No. They don't they don't play to a central striker who holds the ball up and then plays it off to Salah yeah. and Mane. He they literally they'll play it into midfield, and then Thiago or Fabinho or mm. someone like that hold it for a minute and they'll look to see if Salah or Mane can play like they can play, play that, that through ball off the, like the grass cutter yeah. and then suddenly they're they're in behind and even then if it's not that if it's not the through ball Salah or Mane will drop for it and Trent and Robbo push up yeah. behind them they don't they don't really play for that central attacking strike so for me I think Liverpool are looking kind of for what a similar thing Arsenal were looking for back in the day which just we put in loads of crosses and we need someone to finish those crosses Liverpool put in hella crosses and they need someone to put them away and I think he'll do that I think yeah I mean if I have to ask you right now who scored more goals next season than Haaland Haaland I mean, no, yeah, no it's, not, it's not even a question. City that? makes stupid amount of chances, and not that Liverpool don't, but City's XG, oh, it's just a I joke. I mean, I think if you're looking at game. both teams, Liverpool's front three will take more time to bet in yeah. than City's front three because yeah. for me, City, City, make City more have and Haaland's better than Nunez. I mean, City have Kevin De Bruyne as yeah, well. And that. I mean, I, I, I think Kevin De Bruyne is the best midfielder maybe in the world. Yeah, and I, is I, he I, the best midfielder the Prem's ever seen? I mean, that's a top conversation for another day. We could do a whole that episode is, just on that. That is, I think that, my answer right yeah, now. Is, yeah, you just you just put me right in the yeah, mud there. Yeah, what the fuck yeah, am I meant to say to yeah, that, mate? I think you might be. Um, but, um, he's unbelievable. He's good. Player. I mean, yeah, it's, it's going to be very scary to see a player like Harden having the creative prowess that City do yeah. feeding him. Yeah, it's crazy. Like you say, you could literally put anyone up front for City, and you're getting ten goals a season minimum. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean. You're talking about other news. We've got um, Basuma to Spurs. Spurs. Not confirmed yet, million. but I think the medical is I like think, today. I think the the deal is agreed for twenty five million. Yeah, that is an absolute absolute bargain. steal. He is a phenomenal, phenomenal such a good player, player tenacious, ball winning midfielder. I mean, if, you remember when um, that's what you want. Decore was getting linked with Arsenal for like yeah. fifty million. I think Basuma is on that level. Yeah, if not Basuma maybe better. Is so good. For me, the issue is the sketchy case. Yeah, well, potential sexual. I mean, case. we're just going to talk about him as a footballer yeah. because I mean, but I think that is why certain clubs aren't in for him. Oh yeah, hundred percent. And so I don't know. Spurs have not got a free run at him because there's probably other teams that are yeah. looking at him. I but mean, like yeah, that obviously issue. does come into it. I mean, I, I, I he, I'm just going to look at it from the football aspect right now. Good player, yeah. phenomenal player, phenomenal, phenomenal player, and one of Brighton's. Best, players, best yeah. players, yeah. Him, Lamptey, Cucurella as well. Cucurella, They've been... City looking at him, aren't they? Yeah, yeah 50 million. Yeah, it's a bit crazy, yeah. City also looking at Calvin Phillips for 60 million. I think City would sign Calvin Phillips and he wouldn't play a game. They need someone. Fernandinho's gone now, isn't he? So yeah, they need... but Rodri. Rodri plays that. He's that defensive midfielder. Yeah, but they can't play him I mean, 60, 70 games a season. No, but I mean, will Calvin Phillips want to go to City to sit on the bench? Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Um, I think he probably does want to move on. I think I mean, if I'm Calvin Phillips, you go to I'm City. Finding a different project. Than you City, go, you're going to City and you think, right, I can get myself a Premier League medal here. Yeah, you just or watch what happens to Jack. You Jack go Lewis. to a team like Man United who are building yeah. something under Ten Hag, who is renowned for being able to like grow players into phenomenal players yeah. and maybe even double their worth, like better than they actually are. And he, he'll probably play every game for them. So, I mean, it depends what kind of player he actually yeah. wants to be. But 60 million for him, I think, is quite a lot. Yeah, well, City will need to sell some players. I saw a clip on TalkSport where one of the pundits was talking about Declan Rice for 100 million or Yves Basuma for 25. And I think you're taking Basuma every time. Yeah, I think Unless so. You've got that, money you've got that England tax on Rice, didn't you? Yeah. I'm, I would ha- if, it, if it was free, you're taking Rice. Yeah. But, yeah, Basuma... Unbelievable, but for me, Basuma is very one-dimensional as a player. Yeah, he offers unreal, probably unmatched in the Prem beyond maybe like Thomas Partey and Fabinho levels of ball winning. But his ball progression is pretty pretty bad. 
Yeah. So you need. It's kind of what I'm saying about but England. I mean, they've you got, need they've a player got, alongside they've got him. players like Hoiberg who can. Actually, I don't think Hoiberg's a Hoiberg. Like he's that, not. Though. He's not progressive, but he he is good at playing you forward need passes. Probably like Ben Tancor would be all right at that. But I mean, Spurs, like you say, don't play through the middle. No. Spurs, literally, all their chances come from the wide men. Yeah. And I think. Um, so yeah, I think he's presuming it's a good signing for them. Uh, um. Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe Phillips. 25 million as well is a joke. So, 25 million is insane. Happy days for them. Um, so, also, we had Vincent Company join in recently relegated Burnley. Yeah, that is nuts, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't really know too I much. He I stunk he, it up at Anderlecht. He went to Anderlecht and he was manager, and then he joined as a, then he rejoined as a player to play like the last few games of the season. And then he they finished third in the league as when he returned as manager this season. So, they're back in Europe. I don't really know how they were doing. I think Bruges are the clubs they beat uh, right yeah. now. Um, but that's cool. Former Premier League Man City player. He'll come up legend. against QPR, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bit of a legend. He scored an absolute... Was it a Thunderbolt against, against Leicester? Leicester. Leicester. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To win him, goal. Pretty much win them the league. Um, yeah. Across Manchester, we have uh, United. They've been linked with Frankie de Jong. Yeah. They've been linked with uh, Anthony as well, who I remember uh, watching him play in the, uh, the Champions League, I think it was. And the guy is unbelievably techy. Yeah, he's like he, he's sort of like a no. You watch him and you go, oh, yeah, 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 that's yeah, proper dirty. Brazilian, yeah. Um, and also Jurian Timber as well. Yeah, I think he will go to his Ajax team, have a look at the players he like there. I mean, try and bring them over. Frankie De Jong is. I've seen people saying the deal's dumb. I've seen people saying Frank De Jong doesn't want to leave Barcelona. I think he probably doesn't want to leave, but I've heard rumours they're trying to get him out. Yeah, so have I. That's what I. Yeah. yeah so I, for I me. Mean, they're trying to get him out and he's looking at where to go. He probably is, trusts Ten Hag. Yeah, he knows that Ten Hag is going to do him. But like then nothing. it's a combination of like how much do you trust Ten Hag and how much have you seen United be shit recently? I mean, you look at... And kind he of, might look at what happened to Donny van der Beek. And, and and, and, you, also, van der Beek's coming back. He like Do they play alongside each other? Do they have the same position, really? They don't have the same... Donny I mean, van der Beek's a bit more attacking than Frankie De Jong isn't yeah, it yeah I mean I I, I think Don, Donny van der Beek's story is not run yet I think nah, he's got a lot to give he'll be like a new signing like the a new signing yeah I mean uh, Man United have got a lot to work on you know um, I think Ronaldo is still their main player yeah you'd want if you were Ten Hag you'd make sure you keep Ronaldo yeah, Ronaldo, even I mean, just for kind Ronaldo, of like the, the dressing guy, the room guy will, if, if you get them playing right football he will score 25 goals in a season I did the most unreal kind of flip flop on Ronaldo last season because like for the first 10-15 games I was certain he was holding them back I was like he's not pressing well enough his kind of link up play isn't what he used to be he's not sharp enough He's keeping like Rashford out of the team, blah, blah, blah. But by the end of the season, he was literally the only good player in the team. And I mean, stopped them from finishing literally like bottom half of the table. Regardless of the Messi versus Ronaldo debate, he is one, he is yeah, the one top, of he's ever. in the top two players in the world. Yeah, yeah. Of all time ever. Yeah, he's, he proved me kind of not wrong because I wasn't like, oh, get him out. But I was like, I didn't think he'd do as well as he did. He literally carried that United team. And at, what, 37? That's a joke. Yeah, I think, uh, I I don't have any doubt of him scoring another 15 goals next season. Oh, yeah, and if United get playing properly on the Ten Hag, you're looking at another 20 goals. And yeah, that's what you need. Is there, I mean, can, can United really get a hold of a better goal scorer? No, not like... There, that is another thing I was going to talk to you about on the Haaland Nunez debate. Are Liverpool playing that, playing that premium because the striker market is so dry at the moment? I mean... Because it is at, dry. I mean, the only other option you really have is Lewandowski. Yeah, you're talking old players like Benzema, Ronaldo, Lewandowski. When well, Benzema's not going to leave, Benzema's well, going to retire. Gonna leave, at, but yeah, you're yeah. talking like that ilk of like older striker that you're not going to sign because they're too old. I would like to see Lewandowski in the Premier League. I, I think, or you're talking the new gen of striker, the Nunez, the Haaland's, and but you're paying a premium for them because there's not many of them on the market. And then they're like young 20s, and then the other boys are like old 30s. So there's no one in like their prime 27, 28, 29 age. Harry Kane. That is bagging goals. I mean, Harry Kane had Harry a good Kane. end to the season. Yeah. And I think... What about he, Lukaku maybe? But he's... I mean... He, he's I, twerking I, I, for inner, you isn't know he? what? I just... I, like, I'm so baffled by Lukaku. I yeah. don't know whether he's good or he's bad. Nah, he's twerking for inner. He's going to get that move back, I reckon. I don't know. Maybe he... he, he yeah, I, I mean, I hope it works From what I've him. seen, he, like Chelsea, are pretty open to getting rid of him. Yeah, so. I mean, get rid of him and play Havertz as that centre forward. Yeah, right I like forward. Havertz, I mean, yeah. I think that's what every Chelsea fan's crying out for. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, 
I think, yeah, Liverpool probably have played a bit of a premium for Nunez, but I also think it, Man United went in for him. Yeah. And so that also puts up the price. Also, from what I'm seeing, his wages are pretty low. So Whereas like with Haaland, yeah, Haaland had the release wage. clause. He was approached by pretty much every massive yeah, club in Europe. Yeah, and then you have to pay the fat wage. It was, I mean, obviously his dad played for City. He said in the interview yeah. he was a massive City fan. He was born, like, or he grew up born in City, in City or something. Yeah, like. yeah. So he had that going for them and they probably just offered him some ridiculous money yeah I and think, like that's it you only got like to the player like there whereas k a week I mean yeah team. I mean he, they've only got a, they've only got to agree to deal with the player because yeah. the, the negotiation of the club is done yeah, yeah. they don't have to tell the club yeah, yeah yeah whereas Liverpool were against like I know Man United were the, the other big front runner yeah, for yeah. him I mean if you're choosing the minute between Liverpool like United you're going Liverpool aren't you but I mean yeah they probably did have to pay a premium and like you look at Mijal Felix went to Atletico yeah. But we are good at getting their money for their players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. They just get them out and then get a new one in. Um, Should we do the raffle? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, the so raffle, the, uh, the uh, competition. What we've done is we've uh, loaded everyone who retweeted our tweet into So there the was 36 spin-off. of you. That's it. Yeah, 36 retweets. So you've all been boshed into a little spinny wheel. Right. Uh, I'm going to spin the wheel now. Good luck. Everyone, this is for Three, the mystery kit. Two, one. Blop, blop, blop. And so the winner is, I'm not going to say your uh, Twitter out in case you don't want me to out you, but your name is Paul. I'm going to drop you a DM from the board draw account to so keep an eye on your socials. Yeah. Congratulations, mate. We'll Congratulations. be sending you a mystery, yeah, mystery kit. We don't even know what it is yet. Yeah. I mean, hopefully it's good. You've got to let us know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to see if it's done. No, it's worth doing it again. Come on. Gonna get it. So, Come. yeah, keep an eye on your socials. I'll drop you a DM and we'll sort out sending that to you. Congratulations, Paul, mate. Legend. I think. Uh, Thanks for retweeting. That's a nice little way to end the podcast. Yeah. Like giving out to the, uh, to the supporters. Thanks um, for listening, boys. Yeah, thanks and for listening, girls. everyone. Um, I think we'll be back at the same time next week. Yeah, we'll go and, So, we took like a week off just to kind of. Get all the socials and stuff up and running. Get yeah, us we, on Spotify. We, we actually went on a little, a little tour up to Manchester for, yep. for a festival, yep. which was kind Love of cool. to see it. A nice little time. But nice yeah, relaxed. we'll talk. Uh, we'll get some weekly stuff going on. We'll talk about. We're saying about the Prem. All the teams. We'll do a little run through of all the teams in the Prem. We're gonna do. Yeah, we're gonna do watch, like when the kit, like when all the kits are out, so we'll do a kit ranking. Yeah, I think we're uh, looking to do a conspiracy theories episode on football as well. Luke's Maybe a what if one. Yeah, I think that could be quite an one. Hat on, mate. Uh, so, so if you've got any ideas or any yeah, uh, comments, then let us know. I want to follow us on our socials as well. So we've got Instagram, we've got Twitter. Follow us on Spotify, Apple Music. We're on everything, YouTube, baby. TikTok Subscribe as well. We're to our YouTube. YouTube. Up and yeah, everything's down in the description below. Um. Yeah, and you've got anything you want to collab or anything, just hit yeah, us up. Yeah, hit us up we'll on here, we'll, yeah. Our DMs are open. Yeah. So Slide in them. Come on. And it's live. All right, cheers, guys.